Today uh, we're going to do a quick breakdown of K2. Um, it's a lightweight fighting robot. If you're not familiar with it, uh, you must be new here. So uh, check out some of my other videos and there's a ton of videos I've been beating up other robots. Um, so let's get started. Um, right now I've got all the safety covers on it. Um, so I keep off the sharp edges, make sure it doesn't spin, all that kind of stuff. I'll start with the, uh, this is the blade cover. Um, it's actually just uh, a couple layers of foam with a few magnets in it uh, and then some duct tape covering it so it sticks to the blade. Kind of a quick way to keep that covered up. Uh, the wedge cover is just a pool noodle uh, with some bungee cords in it. Uh, keep that sharp edge from hurting anybody. And then this is the weapon stop here. It's just a half inch uh, steel bar and I have a little clip to keep it from falling out. Um, so let's get the covers off, um, and you can see what's underneath. So these are um, 3 16 polycarbonate, all the covers. Um, not the strongest, but they don't get beat up too bad. So. I have to replace them every few competitions usually. Okay, so now that we got the covers off, um, I can show the insides. I notice most everything is hidden with this foam. Um, pretty much all my electronics I pack in foam because they can handle the shock. I found over the years that when, whenever I bolt something down hard, it always blows up when I get hit. So this works better for me. So I'll get some of that foam out so we can see what's inside. So this is one of the batteries I run uh, two of these in parallel. This is a Turnigy Nanotech 2200 milliamp hour 6S. And like I said, I run two of those. Um, the other one's over here. And let's just pull some of the foam out. So this is just basic open cell cheap foam. I don't really want to unwrap everything all the way, it's kind of a pain, but uh, let's see here. So we got the two uh, drive speed controllers right here. These are Castle Creations XL2, um, and they're driving these um, brushless in runners in the back. Um, so it's the drivetrain basically, and it's going, the drive motors are mated to 18 volt DeWalt uh, gearboxes, and this is the um, Team Delta uh, mount for it, um, which is no longer made. It's uh, pretty old, but I've still got quite a few spares. Um, that goes to a four inch Colston wheel. And then I have a, um, this is a number 25 uh, chain, just slave to the front. Uh, and then it's got these little, uh, right here, um, these are some, um, they're just basically nylon bushings with shoulder bolts. They act as tensioners. Um, that's pretty much KT's drive system. Uh, it's not too complicated. Uh, it packed in here is the the weapon contactor. I don't really want to pull it out, but it's a Wyachi C1 contactor. So this is just a, a simple on-off switch for the weapon. I can't control the uh, the speed. You know, it's just all or nothing pretty much. And that's turned on by a uh, a Team Delta RC switch, which is buried under here in this rat's nest of wires. Um, master switch, I've got a Wayashi MS1. Uh, they don't make this one anymore, but it's kind of a nice in-between between the MS05 and the MS2. Um, so it's a good, good switch for lightweights, but nowadays you probably have to go up to the bigger MS2. Um, under this little pile of foam, keep all the radio stuff. This little thing I get asked a lot about, this is basically just a, um, it lights up when the weapon switches on. It's just on a Y connector to the, uh, the, the RC switch. So it just tells me that the weapon's active. Um, and under here is the radio receiver. I use a Spectrum. Um, this is the AR6200. Um, just your basic Spectrum radio receiver. And then the weapon motor is a uh, Amflow A28150. 
um, also known as the short mag, whatever you want to call it. Um, then I have a, um, this is a A size V-belt to the weapon. Um, it's got about a, I'd say it's about a 1.5 to 1 reduction here. Um, not not a too much reduction, but just a little bit. And this is the, uh, the business end. Um, this is S7 tool steel, uh, one and a quarter inches thick. It's a nine inch diameter. Um, actually, a pretty good punch when it's going. I have had this is pretty chipped up. I just got back from uh, Robo Games 2016 and took a few good hits there, so it's not invincible. And I had this particular design. I had one crack from here all the way back. Actually, let me let me go get that. So that's uh, one of uh, K2's earlier discs. This is from Robo Games 2015. It's the exact same as this one. It's just this one's busted. So even tool steel that thick can still break. This was from Toro Light. He uh, cut it sideways here and snapped it off. We've got uh, two big shaft collars here on the end of the shaft. And this is a dead shaft. So this is a uh, shaft collar with a flat on it so it doesn't spin. It kind of hits the, the front bulkhead here so it can't rotate. This is the weapon shaft. This is a one inch uh, tubular shaft. Um, this is just a standard McMaster uh, part number. They call it a, um, a precision tubular shaft. So it comes pre-hardened, pre-ground, all that. So it's uh, pretty easy to just slap it in there. Um, on the For thrust bearings, I've, I've tried several different um, things on the interior. I've tried oil lights. Um, they, they tend to kind of break. Uh, I tried Belleville washers. Um, one problem with those, they don't really give you any uh, bearing, you know, so they, they uh, when they spin around, they tend to tear up the, the aluminum frame. So this, I tried this the first time now. It's a, uh, just a UHMW washer, um, standard McMaster. Um, they seem to have worked pretty well. They're only supposed to be good for like 50 RPM or something, but held 5,000 with no problems. So I think I'll stick with these for next time. My other theory with these is they give you a little bit of uh, cushioning. When you take a sideways impact, they'll tend to kind of squish a little bit. Sort of like a Belva washer, but um, plastic instead of steel. And on this particular one, I put a Belva washer behind it because um, I didn't have the right thickness of your HMW. So that, that's what a Belva washer looks like if you don't know what that is. It's a washer that's got a little bit of a concave to it, so it kind of acts like a spring. Um, so here's the weapon assembly. So it's got a um, another one of these McMaster tubes here, um, but it was bored out custom because the uh, um, the IDs on these aren't very uh, precise or anything. So you have to, if you're going to use them like this, you need to get it bored out. Um, and there's a one inch oil light bushing is pressed into there. Um, so the entire length of this uh, this tube has bushings all the way down it. Um, it's one of the nice things about that is when I hit somebody, it spreads out the shock load across the entire length of the shaft, and it makes it less likely to bend the shaft. Um, so that tube holds the bushings. And then I've got these big, huge shaft collars here on both sides. Um, and I have one, half of that is welded onto the blade, and the other half just clamps onto the tube. Um, and that makes it um, pretty tough and uh, impact, so I'm not uh, putting a lot of stress on the weld. It's just the torque from the pulley. Uh, speaking of the pulley, so it's actually um, held on right here by two um, pretty large set screws. And they just basically clamp down on the shaft collar. Um, but on the shaft collar, I think this is pretty key. 
it, it looks like just like this on the other side. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's um, got a flat that's beveled uh, downward sloping towards the blade. So as you tighten down the set screw, it sucks the pulley against the, the blade. So it, it seems kind of like a cheesy setup because it's just a couple of set screws holding on my main weapon pulley, but it's been through three competitions now and it's never given me a problem. So um, pretty simple, but uh, it's, this whole assembly right here weighs about uh, 13, 14 pounds or so. Um, I think the blade itself is only about 10, um, but still a pretty hefty chunk for a uh, lightweight. Uh, the wedge here, this is all titanium. Uh, it's uh, 0.33 inches, so just a little less than 3 eighths. Um, it's got these uh, four little pieces welded to it um, that act as a hinge. And they're actually um, uh, water jet cuts. They're like, they kind of interlock like this before they're welded. Um, so not all of the stress goes to the welds. Um, this is pretty heavy, it's about seven pounds. Um, and then it's got these uh, pins that um, act as the, the hinge for it. Um, these are 7 16 pins. I've had pretty much whenever I get it hit by a drum and this flips up, um, I bend the, the pins. So what I'm using now is uh, just, they're super long grade eight bolts and I cut the threads off the end and I use a shaft collar on the end of it to keep it from falling out. Um, there's also a, a set screw underneath these two frame rails. It's kind of a extra thing to help out the shaft collars so they don't fall. Now one of the other little unique things here I've got, um, I had the initial version of K2 didn't have a belt tensioner and I had the belt would start out nice and tight and then get loose. Um, so I added a belt tensioner to the new version that's right here. Um, it should basically um, a little fork and it's got this little bolt runs through with some bearings on it and there's some screws here I can I can adjust to slide this up and down um, and that lets me uh, adjust the tension. Um, it's worked out pretty well so far so I'll go ahead and take off the wedge to show you how that comes off. This bend's a little bent so it doesn't come out too easy. Okay, so that's the wedge. Um, this, this thing's been around since the beginning, um, taking a whole lot of hits. Um, the only real problem I've had with it is the, uh, the leading edge gets pretty beat up from drums. Um, this one's pretty bad shape now, so I'll have to do a lot of work on it. Uh, in the past, I've to resharpen it, I've um, kind of hit this with an angle grinder and this is actually a bunch of uh, all these marks are like a series of chop saw cuts to try to get it flat again and belt sanded and um, I think after one competition too yeah I took it to a, a welding shop and had them fill in some of the holes with TIG weld and then re it back so it's been through a lot but the main, the main part up here though has been real tough so it's got a few marks on it, but nothing uh, too serious, so. Uh, so you can see kind of the frame. Um, so it's all uh, half inch aluminum. It was water jet cut. Um, pretty much ev everything except for these two rails here um, are 661. And those have actually been the, the same, same parts since 2007. So they never needed to be uh, replaced. I've done a little bit of repair work trying to straighten them out after they've gotten hit and everything, but um, not nothing too serious. Um, these rails, though, have been through three. This is the third revision of these. Um, the original ones had top skids and they had um, a few other things. And one, one of the problems with the original design um, was that the drive motors here, you couldn't take out the top, you had to take out this direction, um, which meant you basically had to take the whole side of the frame out, um, which was a major pain. So one of the first, this um, design has these two screws here and I can take a little small piece out um, and then take out the drive motor out of the top. So it's much, much quicker to work on the pits, um, which is pretty important. 
Um, it's all all the main frame bolts are just quarter twenty um, countersunk screws, um, and then the smaller screws are all uh, ten thirty twos for like the bottom and the top armor. Uh, the bottom armor is eighth inch aluminum. Well, that's the bot. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope to see you at one of my uh, future competitions. Thanks.